Fallon. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. He's Hacker. Talk about a fried egg. I lasted about five minutes out there. I said, to heck with this. I'll do this in the morning. And I don't have any inside information. The lady that did it, she got in there. Don't I go. mean, she made it happen. And he doesn't shy away from opinion. And I do enjoy drinking cold beer at ballparks. So if that makes me a baseball fan, then I'm a diehard baseball fan. It's Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. And a very good Thursday evening to you, Jacksonville. It is Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Coming to you live from Mr. Chubby's Fleming Island. Are you kidding me? What a game. What a day we have in store for you as there is basketball all over the place. TVs everywhere for the night session here on Thursday. Eight games already in the books. Man, I was this close to go in 7-1, and one, which would have been a great start. Boy, Nevada just decided to stop scoring. They're up 56-39 on Dayton. Dayton comes all the way back to beat Nevada 63-60. One of the best games of the day thus far. Uh, probably the biggest upset so far. Duquesne, the 11, over BYU, the 6. So Duquesne advances. Oregon, an 11, knocked off South Carolina. A six. I don't know how big an upset that really was. I know a lot of people picked Oregon, and and what a terrible day for the SEC. Just an absolutely dreadful day so far for the Southeastern Conference. Mississippi State uh, did not look very good as they got knocked out by Michigan State earlier on, and then South Carolina loses. Right now, Kentucky finds themselves in a battle. Five and a half minutes to go in the South region, the 14 seed Oakland leads the three-seed Kentucky 25-22, and we will certainly keep you updated. Other games in progress, Texas leads Colorado State 29-15 with 18.30 to go in the ballgame. Colorado State has scored 15 points in 21 and a half minutes of play. Yikes. Iowa State 22-12 over South Dakota State. That's the 2-15 in the east. And in the Midwest, Gonzaga, an early 18-12 lead over McNeese State. You might remember the coach of McNeese, Will Wade, formerly the coach at LSU. So as always, we'll keep you updated on what's going on, but we got a lot to get into here on a Thursday night. NCAA tournament talk, Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks will preview the Florida game for us tomorrow. That's where we're going to begin in just a moment. Also, NFL talk tonight, and a lot of NFL talk tonight. Justin Mello of the Draft Network does a great job not only covering the draft, he also covers the Tennessee Titans and the AFC South. So we'll talk Jacksonville, we'll talk Tennessee, sprinkle in a little Houston and a little Indianapolis, how this division has been transformed in the last 10 days. Justin Mello of the Draft Network comes up later on. Also, Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated and and Monday Morning Quarterback will join us later on here in the 8 o'clock hour. But as we do every night to kick it off here on Hacker After Dark, we give you a big deal of the night and Dylan Denmark. Let's do that right now. Time now for the big deal of the night. What's the big deal? What is the big deal? deal. It is a big deal. On Hacker After Dark. The Madness. You guys know I love it. I am a huge, huge NCAA tournament fan. Starting today, going all the way through Sunday, 48 NCAA tournament games, and I plan on watching as many as I possibly can. Already eight in the books. Again, six and two for yours truly. I saw when Duquesne knocked off BYU, that absolutely crushed like 85% of the brackets on ESPN.com. There were something like 15% of the brackets were left perfect at 4 o'clock Eastern on Thursday. It is so, so hard to predict this thing. So many things go uh, go unnoticed in the regular season that come to light in the postseason. Oregon's a prime example of that. Look, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I watched a lot of Oregon Duck basketball, but what I did notice is they won the Pac-12 tournament. And my philosophy on picking the brackets, just a little food for thought moving forward in years to come for you, if a team is hot in their conference tournament, I kind of like them in the NCAA tournament. 
South Carolina got absolutely crushed by Auburn in the SEC tournament last week. Oregon wins the Pac-12 tournament, and Oregon today puts one on South Carolina. So I picked Oregon to win. I'm not surprised by that. Duquesne, BYU, throw your hands in the air. I had no idea Duquesne was going to shoot lights out. And the game of the day, again, Nevada, my gracious. Imagine being on that plane ride home right now. You're up 56-39 in the second half. 56-39. And you get outscored 24-4 to to end the game and to end your season as Dayton comes back and wins it 63-60 over Nevada. So, Bad loss for the Wolfpack. That that put a second loss on me. Right now, Texas up 12 on Colorado State. Oakland still up three on Kentucky. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Iowa State, an early eight-point lead on the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. And Gonzaga, the Zags, an early eight-point lead on McNeese State. Those are the four games currently ongoing. The Florida Gators. Begin their NCAA tournament tomorrow, roughly 4.30 Eastern. They'll start 30 minutes after the Marquette game. Goes final, and Florida now knows their opponent, Colorado. Colorado beats Boise State last night, so it will be Colorado out of the Pac-12, or soon to be the Big 12, final year of the Pac-12, and the Florida Gators. And as far as Florida goes, look, I've said this all week, and I continue to believe this. To me... The year has already been a success. Has it been an overwhelming success? No. I think that would only come with a couple of tournament victories. But Florida has missed the NCAA tournament now for a couple of years. They're finally back in the NCAA tournament after Todd Golden had a lot of questions at the midway point of the year. Remember, Florida started 1-3 and three in conference play, and a lot of people, including myself, were starting to wonder about Todd Golden. A lot of those questions have been answered. Golden turned them around, got them into the NCAA tournament as a seven seed. Again, Colorado tomorrow. Here's my thought on Florida. A win tomorrow and everything else is gravy. Now, if you lose tomorrow, there'll probably be some disappointment because you lost to a lower seed, a lower seed that had to play less than 48 hours ago in the first four in Dayton. But if you beat Colorado tomorrow, I don't expect anything else from the Gators because odds are then you're playing the two-seed Marquette in Indianapolis, a seven versus a two. Florida probably is not supposed to win that game. And I like Marquette to knock them out, as a matter of fact, in the round of 32. A loss tomorrow for the Gators I do think would be a little disappointing based on what people were thinking just a couple weeks ago. How will the Micah hand locked an injury affect Florida. Well, it's going to have an effect. There's no doubt about that. Micah Hanlocked and did not score a lot of points, but what he did do is a seven-foot-one frame disrupted a lot of shots. He was a good defender, and more importantly, he was a very good rebounder and one of the best in the country, quite frankly, at offensive rebounds. And Florida is going to have to figure out a way with Alex Condon, with Thomas Howe, with Tyrese Samuel, the remaining bigs that are healthy, They're going to have to figure out a way to replace Han Lockton's productivity. Micah Han Lockton played 22 minutes a game. Can Florida find a way to cover those 22 minutes without getting in foul trouble with the three bigs? Maybe mix in a little Riley Kugel, 6'5", a little Will Richard. He's listed at 6'5". Maybe those guys have to play in the front court two or three minutes tomorrow, do just enough to get by Colorado and then we'll see what happens on Sunday if Florida does indeed take on Marquette in the round of 32. So there you go, more NCAA tournament talk to come. We'll have Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks, again, to preview Florida's NCAA tournament run. That comes up later on in the 9 o'clock hour. To the National Football League, which is where we're headed next, Justin Mello of the Draft Network will join us. I want to talk some draft. Certainly. And now when you talk draft, you can talk post-free agency draft. For the longest time, I had these draft guys on, and you say, all right, we got to wait until they do free agency to see where the dust settles. Well, the dust is settled. You know what positions were addressed now. You know who they spent money on. You know who they let go. It's starting to get easier to maybe pinpoint a position or two 
that the Jaguars will target in the NFL draft next month. So Justin Mello of the Draft Network not only will talk wide receiver with us when it comes to Jacksonville, will talk defensive back with us when it comes to Jacksonville because I believe right now, aren't those two probably the positions you're looking at in round one and or round two? I mean, if you give me wide receiver and you give me corner, I give you the field as far as every other position. I like my chances as to where Florida is going at 17 and where they're likely to go at 49. So we'll spend a majority of our time on wide receivers and on defensive backs. But I also want to look at the AFC South. Justin lives in the Nashville area, does a great job covering the Tennessee Titans. So we'll talk a little Calvin Ridley and his impact on the Titans up there. We'll talk a little Houston, some Indianapolis, and I want to get Justin's thoughts on the Jaguars, on Eric Armstead, on Mitch Morse, on Gabe Davis, on everything the Jaguars were able to accomplish over these last 10 or 11 days in NFL free agency. So a lot of NFL talk tonight, a lot of NCAA tournament talk tonight, and again, great atmosphere. Thank you to Mr. Chubby's out in Fleming Island. That is our location. When I say TVs everywhere, I mean TVs everywhere. I'm just on one side of the restaurant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count 11 TVs without even looking to my left. 11 TVs just in my view on this side of the restaurant. Every game is tuned to an NCAA tournament game. Obviously, the wings, the burgers, everything here is absolutely sensational. This will be a great place to come tonight, tomorrow, this weekend to watch all the NCAA tournament action. Our friends out here, Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island out in Clay County. Justin Mello of the Draft Network talking Jaguars, talking Titans, talking Texans, a little bit of Colts, and I want to talk wide receivers, and I want to talk defensive backs in the April draft. That's next. Hacker After Dark, live from Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island as we roll on right here on 1010XL and on 92. Point five FM. Dan Hicken. Well, I'm a genius at making a fool out of myself. Always finding new ways to do it. Jeff Prosser. I found that if you have a goal, that you might not reach it. But if you don't have one, then you are never disappointed. Mornings on 1010XL. And I got to tell you, it feels phenomenal. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Hacker here for my friends at Awaken 180 Weight Loss. You know, the number uh, 30 is kind of an interesting number. 30 pounds. That's what I'm down in three weeks. 30 pounds in three weeks. And it's all thanks to the good folks at Awaken 180 Weight Loss. You know, I heard Matt Hayes and Mike Dempsey talking about Awaken 180. I saw the results they were getting on Awaken 180, and I wanted to try it. And I've tried a lot of programs in the past. Some of you might remember some of those programs. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, Awaken 180 is the best program I have ever been a part of. You get coaching on a weekly basis. They make a game plan for you. The food is delicious. I'm losing weight the right way. No pills, no injections. And again, the results are showing 30 LBs in just three weeks. Go to Awaken180WeightLoss.com or call 844-346-1800. If it's time for you, like it was for me, To drop some pounds, Awaken 180 Weight Loss, 844-346-1800. This is your Mad Dad's Update with Chapter President Donald Ford. Mad Dad's is asking for good, committed men who want to be part of an organization that has been around for 17 years. We are a group that is part of the solution, not the problem. We are a group that don't stand around murmuring and complaining, but get into action and hit the streets to get the community to break the code of silence to remove the murderers off our street. We do not require a lot of time, just willing and able bodies to get involved. We've had far too many murders this year already not to get involved. If you want to be part of this great organization, call 904-718-1649. We're looking for men, not men acting like boys. Hit me on Facebook and tell me what you think. 
For information about Mad Dad, go to Mad Dad Jacksonville Chapter Facebook or MadDadJacksonville.com. At Doc Dr. Rooter, we understand plumbing issues can be a real inconvenience for your building or business, and we're here to help. We can handle all kinds of plumbing jobs, including broken pipes, clogged drains, line jetting, installing water heaters, and full repipes. Need a camera inspection or a smoke test? Yes, Duck Duck Rooter does that too. Plus, our lift station services include inspections, monitoring, cleaning, and repairs. When you're stuck, call the Duck. 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. This NFL free agency profile is brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Experience the universal difference. Jacksonville nabs a big-name cornerback in Ronald Darby. The former Seminole wears a Super Bowl ring from his Philly days with Coach Doug Peterson. The ACC Rookie of the Year was a Swiss Army knife in the Florida State defensive backfield. And Darby's diverse skills are sure to come in handy here in Duval. Visionaries, builders, and doers, are you ready to change the world? Miller Electric is your opportunity to shape the future. Miller Electric is leading the charge in electric vehicle technology with our state-of-the-art EV Innovation Design Center. We're working to create a sustainable future. We're also the proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, powering their performance at the brand-new Miller Electric Center. Miller Electric, we provide competitive pay, unbeatable benefits. Apply today. MillerCareers.com, Miller Electric, an equal opportunity employer. This date in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On March 21st, 2019, Japanese baseball right fielder Ichiro Suzuki finishes his career with a record 4,367 base hits as Mariners beat the A's. Pross, I'm thinking about changing my name. Again? You're already the media mogul, the straw that stirs the drink, the Duke of Pablo Bay. Now what? Refer to me as Dreamfinders Danny Hicken. What in the blazes? Is this a cash grab? No, it's just that I believe so much in Dreamfinders Homes. 20 locations in Northeast Florida, official home builder of Jags and Gators. Great opportunity for first time homeowners. All right. Dreamfinders Danny, it is. Did I mention the lowest interest rates you can find? Visit DreamfindersHomes.com. Now let Dreamfinders Danny celebrate through the majesty of song. Dream finders, oh, I believe they will build Make your stop. home just right. You know what happens when a smart group of medical professionals get together and commit to a technology designed to relieve your aching joints without surgery? It's called QC Kinetics. And this guy knows the power of a solid team. Emmett Smith, football legend and dancing with the stars champ. This elite medical group, some of them orthopedic doctors, got together and said, why are we prescribing so many medications? Why are we sending so many people to surgery in droves? Let's change this. The answer, natural biologics, our own healing properties, and the outcome is the country's largest provider of non-surgical regenerative treatments, QC Kinetics. Actually, the real outcome are the tens of thousands of patients who finally got their quality of life back without surgery. Thanks to QC Kinetics. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the all-pro roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Boy, it's been a very active couple of weeks in the AFC South. A lot of teams making a lot of moves. Indianapolis keeping their own. Houston has certainly added a lot of pieces, including Daniil Hunter, and both Jacksonville and Tennessee, probably the two most active teams in free agency. Let's talk about it with Justin Mello, he of the Draft Network. He also does a great job covering the Tennessee Titans, and he's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Justin, how you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan. Appreciate you for having me on here. It's been... uh... Certainly an interesting period here between the, uh, for the Jaguars and the Titans. Some of that uh, head-to-head division battle seems to also be occurring in free agency, so it's been fun. Yeah, again, Tennessee and Jacksonville, two of the most active teams. And let's begin with Ridley. I know you work for the Draft Network. You also cover the Tennessee Titans as well. What has been the reaction to the arrival of Calvin Ridley there in Nashville? Well, I think Titans fans are excited. And understandably so. When when they hired head coach Brian Callahan, the belief was that he was going to install a pass-happy offense 
He believes in quarterback Will Levis as a franchise guy. That's partially why he took the job. Coming over from Cincinnati, it was quite obvious that he also believes in rostering many high-end wide receivers, right? He's spoken publicly about his involvement in the Jamar Chase versus Penny Sewell debate that went on there a couple of years ago. In fact, he said publicly, when all things are equal, I'm going to take the guy that can score points. Now, one thing we've learned about Brian Callahan so far in Nashville is he surprisingly is uh, he's surprisingly honest, is what I'm trying to say. He is not one of those coaches that really believes in holding things close to the chest and competitive advantages. No, he really likes wide receivers, and he's told them he's told everyone at every chance, every turn he's gotten that he really likes wide receivers. So analyzing Titans roster, nothing proven behind DeAndre Hopkins. It was very clear they needed to upgrade the position this year, this offseason. I thought they would do it through the draft. I didn't think they would do something so bold in free agency, given that they already have a veteran in Hopkins, and they need a, you know, a guy that can replace him long-term. That's not going to be Calvin Ridley, you know, who's about 29 years old, isn't a dominant X-boundary type, will fit in really nicely at, at the Z position and will give them some downfield speed that DeAndre Hopkins doesn't really have at this point in his career. Um, so there are some questions, I think, with the addition as well. I know a lot of people felt like they overpaid. That's what happens in free agency. Jacksonville's overpaid for a couple of guys as well. I think every single team has around the league. But there's certainly a layer of excitement of the belief around Will Levis, of, the, of building around him and getting him two really legitimate you know, wide receiver one types. And when I say that, uh, they're both top 32 receivers in this league. So the Titans haven't had that in a couple of years, so there's certainly some excitement. I was surprised. You talk about brutal honesty with Callahan. I was kind of surprised, and a lot of us here in Jacksonville were, just in the brutal honesty of Calvin Ridley when he met the Nashville media. Uh, I mean, essentially saying, and, and he said some nice things about the Titans. I don't want it to seem like he didn't. But the two things I took out of that was, he wanted to remain in Jacksonville. It didn't work out, and the money was great up in Nashville. Is there any negative feedback from either of those comments up there? I personally don't think there is because, it, to be quite honest with you, Ryan, as someone that's you know been in this business for a while now, I find it really funny and, and downright pathetic when players trip over themselves, and I get why they do it, but they trip over themselves trying to pretend like money wasn't a big deciding factor in their decision in free agency. No, it always is. In fact, and again, I mean no disrespect to this, but there were a lot of years where the Jaguars were not a good team and yet dominated free agency every year, right? Players like money. It's not breaking news. It's not a flashing neon sign. All players like money. They want to secure their futures in free agency. Calvin really is a guy that had a lot of reason to do so. Right, not really getting the second contract in Atlanta the way they thought it'd play out based on the suspension. So he's a guy that that's really thankful that he cashed in. No, I think it's silly that we we all try to pretend like money's not the reason most of these guys make the decisions that they make in free agency. It almost always is the deciding factor for them. And at the end of the day, look, it, it, you know, we could talk about this a year or two from now. If it, does it come with concerns over motivation? Does it come with the way he's going to attack his work every day? He made it very clear, you know, and, and again, you'd expect him to say that, but he made it very clear that he's extremely uh, hungry to sort of live up to the contract and how much he loves football. Said some good things, like you said, um, we can revisit that a year or two from now. but And it, it goes back to another thing that Brian Callahan said throughout his introductory press conference, that he was going to do things differently and that players respect coaches when they are put in positions to succeed. Brian Callahan has a lot of belief in his offensive system, and Calvin Ridley will be plenty motivated if he likes the way they're using him, right? And he's going out there and he's being productive. He talked a little about that. He wasn't as productive in Jacksonville as he thought he could be. And he also seemed to lay that blame at the feet of Jacksonville and the coaching staff, which, again, a lot of players feel that way, right, when things don't go according to plan. I think one thing that Titans fans are finding a lot of solace in with this Calvin Ridley contract and even those comments is, and you'll know this, their new offensive coordinator is Nick Holtz, the passing game coordinator of the Jacksonville Jaguars last year. You would like to think Holtz had a, played a pretty big role in this decision, right? Certainly they would have vetted him as the only coach on staff that actually knows Calvin Ridley intimately. 
from the season ago that Calvin Ridley was this disaster in the locker room, this sort of distraction, this sort of money-hungry motivator. I don't think Nick Holtz would have signed off on that move. In fact, I, I think they find a lot of confidence in the fact that things didn't go to plan for Calvin Ridley in Jacksonville after only recording, you know, uh, just a hair over a thousand receiving yards when people probably thought he was going to be a 13, 1400 type. I wrote about this before he became a free agent, nine games with under 45 receiving yards. I believe that is that's more than half the schedule. It was not a very good year for Calvin Ridley when you really take a deep dive into it. So I think you find even more comfort in the fact that all of that happened and a guy that coached him last year still said, no, this is a guy that we would love to have here. He would be a quality addition to the team. Justin Mello of the Draft Network also does a great job covering the Tennessee Titans. He's here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Justin, I'm curious your thoughts about the Jaguars. They lost Ridley. And maybe with the money that they saved there, they went out and got Eric Armstead from San Francisco. You combine that with Devin Duvernay and and Mitch Morse and Gabe Davis and Darnell Savage and Ronald Darby. I mean, Jacksonville has been very, very active. What's your thought on what the Jaguars have accomplished over the last week or so? Well, like most teams in free agency, I think they've done some good things and maybe some things that aren't as good. Uh, I thought the Eric Armstead addition, uh, they overpaid a little, but he's a terrific addition to that defensive line. You talk about a guy with inside-outside versatility, uh, you know, a, pro, a pro experience that he has under his belt uh, being there in San Francisco. He's going to be a really nice addition. Guys like uh, Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen are going to really appreciate having him on that defensive line and what he's going to do to take attention away from, from them. Uh, I thought Ronald Darby was a, a quality signing. I think two years, $10 million. It's where you find good value in free agency. I thought Ronald Darby was really good value, and he's going to play a role for them as like a top three, top four cornerback type. Um, you know, the Mitch Morse edition, let's call it what it is. It kind of, I think it already is essentially Jacksonville admitting defeat on Luke Fortner, right? A top 65 pick. Uh, that started at center last year and struggled. Well, now they go out and get a veteran center with a lot of experience under his belt. I think Mitch Mortz will give them better play in 2024 than Luke, than Luke Fortner gave them in 2023. The Gabe Davis edition, you know, it was one I, I was a little iffy on. Uh, you know, you appreciate the ability to stress defenses vertically. The contract, although I know you can't take these things at face value, thought it was a bit of an overpay at three year 39. They'll, they'll have an out before that point, of course. Um, it didn't really reach its potential in Buffalo. I, I thought a great opportunity playing in, a, in an offense with Josh Allen and opposite Stephon Diggs. I thought that, you know, the problems with drops was constantly there. Didn't think he met his performance ceiling. And I also think he gives them. You know, something somewhat similar to what Christian Kirk gives them. So I thought that was a bit of a, a curious addition, uh, that one in particular. But I like a lot of what they've done. Eric Armstead, Ronald Darby. Um, I, I think they've got some clear needs at some other positions uh, that they'll probably plan to attack in the 2024 draft. Justin Mello of the Draft Network, and let's get to the draft. All right, the Jaguars very active. They brought in a corner, right? They did bring in Darby, but I think certainly you look at the roster, Justin, there appears to still be a need at corner. I, I'm still of the opinion, you know, offensive tackle shouldn't be ruled out. Keep in mind, after 2024, the only offensive tackle on the roster that will be under contract is Anton Harrison because Cam Robinson will be a free agent. Walker Whittle's rookie deal will also be over. So I think tackle potentially in play. And do you rule anything out, I guess, after what they did in free agency? What's your thought on the Jaguars now at 17? Well, I don't think it'll be a tackle, right? I, I think, you know, I think there are just too many other, you know, glaring needs at, at two premium positions for them to think a year ahead. And, and they could always, you know, maybe re-sign a Walker Little may not be as expensive as they fear. But I look at wide receiver now. Of course, we, we've talked about the Calvin Ridley departure. Even with the Dave Davis addition, I, I still think that signals a big hole um, at, at that position. And, and I think, believe they said it, or Dave Davis said it publicly, like signing Dave Davis wasn't going to prevent them from trying to retain Calvin Ridley, right? So that tells you they don't see him as like a like-for-like -like replacement for Ridley and still believe um, they could have had a role for a, a, a sort of a bigger named receiver that commands more targets in the offense to play alongside Dave Davis and Christian Kirk. And 
I believe Zay Jones is still under contract. There were some whispers he was going to be a cap casualty. He's still there as of now. So when I look at receiver and corner, I, I'd be stunned if the pick in the first round isn't one of those two positions, right? You talked about the need opposite Tyson Campbell at corner. I think it's a big one. But I also think signing a guy like Ronald Darby at least makes it so where you've got some insurance, right? And you've got a backup plan. That's one of those quality signings where you don't enter the draft anymore and say it has to be a cornerback. Right, And I think they also have enough at receiver where they don't have to say it has to be at receiver. But I'll be shocked if it's not one of those two. Justin, in the time we have left, let's quickly address wide receiver and corner. Now it's 17, and maybe if you want to expand it to 49, the second round pick for the Jaguars. What are we thinking? Wide receiver-wise, are we thinking Brian uh, Thomas will be there from LSU, maybe Mitchell, the young man from Texas? Those are kind of the two names I've seen. As far as defensive back, I'd love the the kid, um, Quinion Mitchell, but but all indications are he might be gone by then. What are you thinking as far as 17 and 49 potential guys that could be around in those spots? Well, I think they're going to be in a really good position at both spots, right? I mean, at 17 – some of the names you mentioned, uh, you know, Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, you're talking about big-bodied, vertical types that can play the X spot. I mean, they became the second and third wide receivers. They both did since, like, 2015 to, to have that size and measurements, like 6'3", 205, and then run the 40-yard dash in 4.35 seconds, 4.34 seconds. The only other one to do that in, like, the last decade was D.K. Metcalf. And we know how that worked out. So I think that would be a terrific addition for Trevor Lawrence and the offense, whether it would, would be A.D. Mitchell or Brian Thomas Jr. at 17 overall. And they're going to have a, a pick of the litter for, of corners as well. Maybe one or two of them goes before then, but there are a lot of guys. We, you talked about Quinion Mitchell. Terry and Arnold from Alabama is my number one ranked corner in this class. He's a terrific prospect. There are guys like Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama and, and uh, Cooper DeGene from Iowa that might garner consideration there. So they're going to have a lot. I mean, you get to 49. There are some corners I think are going a li- are flying a little under the radar right now. Cam Hart from Notre Dame, uh, Max Melton from Rutgers. Those guys have had terrific uh, pre-draft processes. There's a couple of uh, uh, corners from Florida State, Renardo Green, Jerry and Jones, who have had really good processes as well that I think are going to go higher than people realize. And you're aware of how deep receiver is. If they wait till 49 for a receiver, I mean, uh, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina, Keon Coleman from Florida State could be there, Ricky Persall from Florida, Roman Wilson from Michigan. I mean, there are a number of wideouts that uh, are going to be drafted in the 40s and 50s that are going to be immediate contributors next year uh, in the NFL because it's such a deep class, probably the deepest position group uh, of any group in the 2024 NFL draft. So I think Jacksonville's in a good position. They have clear holes at wide receiver and corner, but those are two positions I expect them to have success attacking uh, in April's draft. Justin Mello of the Draft Network. Justin, tell the good folks here in Jacksonville about the Draft Network and what you guys have coming up in the coming weeks. A lot of pro day coverage coming in these next couple days. Huge days, a huge week for pro days around the NFL. USC, Alabama, Texas, you name it. There are so many scheduled for this week. We're also, I've also got daily interviews right now with prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft. Make sure you check those out on thedraftnetwork.com. And, of course, a favorite of everyone's Mock Draft Monday, a brand-new two-round Mock Draft every single Monday from now until the NFL Draft. Absolutely love it. Justin, I told you this last time, man. You do a terrific job in what you do, not only with the Titans but at the Draft Network. Let's hopefully dial your phone one more time right on the eve of the draft. We'll see where things stand at that point. As always, really appreciate you, my friend. Appreciate you, Ryan. Thanks for having me on. There you go, Justin Mello of the Draft Network. Certainly thank him for his time with us here on Hacker After Dark. NCAA tournament, four games going on right now. We got three relatively close games and a route. Texas 39-32 over Colorado State. Seven minutes to go in the game. Seven minutes to go in the game. It's 39-32, Texas over Colorado State. Kentucky trailing Oakland at the half. That is the three versus the 14 in the south region. That's the Gator region for what's that, what that is worth. Oakland up 38-35 at halftime over the Wildcats. Iowa State over South Dakota State by seven at halftime. And I drank the Kool-Aid, man. Everybody was talking about McNeese State 
and Will Wade, and I'm like, yeah, why not? I got to pick a, a 12, right? You got to. It's a rite of passage to pick a 12. Well, they are getting absolutely boat raced right now. Gonzaga up 44-20 over McNeese with two minutes to go in the first half. And to compound that, Denmark, I had McNeese in my sweet 16 because I got Samford beating Kentucky tonight. So I'm in an awful lot of trouble after a hot 6-2 and two start this afternoon. Denmark, have you lost any of your Sweet 16 or Elite 8 teams yet? Uh, yeah, I had South Carolina going pretty deep with Kansas, so uh, you can scratch that off the board. And I had, I had a couple of good ones, but that was uh, that's my worst one so far. Yeah, South Carolina just didn't have it today. Oregon was all over them. And again, I go back to my philosophy of conference tournaments. South Carolina got bit, beat big in the SEC tournament, whereas Oregon came in with an awful lot of confidence after winning the Pac-12 tournament. And that confidence continues today as Oregon eliminates uh, South Carolina. Mississippi State has also been knocked out. So the SEC 0-2 and Kentucky trailing at the half. So it has been a bad, bad start for the Southeastern Conference. we still got four games to go tonight. St. Peter's and Tennessee. NC State, Texas Tech, Samford and Kansas, and Drake, Washington State, all yet to tip off. Again, the Gators, 4.30 tomorrow against Colorado, the 7 seed versus the 10 seed. That's scheduled for roughly a 4.30 Eastern tip tomorrow. For Florida, a great place to watch that game would be right here at Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island. That is where we are tonight. We love coming out to March Madness and the NCAA tournament out of Mr. Chubby's. Terrific food, TVs everywhere, great food, great atmosphere, cold drinks. What more could you ask for? Mr. Chubby's, Fleming Island, come on out and join us here on Hacker After Dark. Coming up next, back in to the National Football League, my buddy Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. Let's take another look at the AFC South. Let's talk Jacksonville. And I always appreciate Matt Verderam's honesty. One of the things I love about having him on is he doesn't sugarcoat a whole lot. And let's just say this. He was not very high. In fact, he really did not like one of the Jaguar free agent signings. Listen to what he says, hear him out, and then get your opinion. That's next on a Thursday night edition, live from Mr. Chubby's and Fleming. It's Hacker After Dark. Now you can watch 1010XL. Oh, you've worked in television? No, but I watch a lot of it. Search 1010XL video, all one word, on YouTube to watch shows, podcasts, and more. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation. Light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. Here's your 1010XL First Coast Community Calendar. The Tom Coughlin J Fund helps families battling childhood cancer, and there are ways you can help. Go to tcjfund.org. City Rescue Mission has been providing food, clothing, and love for over 70 years to the homeless in Jacksonville. If someone you know is struggling, learn more about the City Rescue Mission at crmjax.org. You have healing power. Even writing a letter or volunteering can help heal a veteran. Find out more at HealVets.org. If you know someone with cancer and no insurance, call the U.S. Uninsured Helpline at 800-234-1317. Hope Haven believes in children and youth with special needs and abilities and has developed programs to help ensure their success. Find out more about their employment services and internship program at Hope-Haven.org. If you're involved in a community event and you'd like us to help spread the word, find out how at 1010XL.com. 
Imagine driving a late model Corvette, BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, Honda, Chevy, Ford, and more. All at a fraction of the original sticker price. Visit Vaughn Motor Group's indoor showroom and browse a great selection of dream cars that are inspected with warranties. Before you make your next auto purchase, check out Vaughn Motor Group on San Jose Boulevard or at VaughnMotorGroup.com for a complete inventory listing. If you can dream it, you can drive it at Vaughn Motor Group. Start your Saturday with a whiff of the great outdoors. Captain Kevin Favor here with Captain Kirk and Jeff Lagerman. We bring you the fresh air of the great outdoors. On the Nimnit Outdoors Show, presented by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing and Septic Services on 1010XL. Instant key, instant key. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant keys comes to you. Call 904-722-1111. Instant Key saves the day if you've lost or broken keys. They can program new keys and remotes for nearly every make and model of vehicle at a fraction of the dealership cost. Fast, honest, and reliable locksmith service. Call Instant Keys, 722-1111. Hey sports fans, it's Hayes Carlion for Kingfish Pest Control. Are mosquitoes turning your outdoor fun into a full contact sport? Time to call in Kingfish Pest Control. I can tell you from my own experience, they are the MVPs of mosquito elimination. See for yourself. Call Kingfish Pest Control today and get an unbeatable 50% off your first treatment. That's right. Sign up for a full season of lockdown coverage and get 50% off your first treatment. Don't let mosquitoes steal your home field advantage. Reclaim your yard with Kingfish Pest Control. This is Keith Catlin for Catlin Truck Accessories, and we are so blessed to be in business for over 100 years. Over 100 years of the best product and customer service means you can count on Catlin. From roll and lock bed covers to Lear toppers to cam locker toolboxes, Catlin Truck Accessories has you covered when it comes to your truck or van. We do those too. Got a fleet of vehicles? We can outfit them all. Who can you count on? Count on one name, one location, 100 years, you can count on Catlin. Have you or someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away? I'm Susan Cohen, and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein & Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI and all criminal offenses. I've been named the best DUI attorney in the state, and David has been named the best criminal defense lawyer in Jacksonville. In your battle with the justice system, there is only one thing you need to know. Dial David 24-7 at Epstein and Robbins. 354-5645. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We're glad you're with us. Well, this week has been very active. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, some good, some interesting, probably some bad, a little bit of everything. Let's talk about it with Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. He's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Matt, how you doing? Good. How are you, Ron? Matt, we're good, man. Thank you for the time. I know you're very busy this week. And the Jaguars uh, added six new bodies, but everybody's talking about they won the loss yesterday with – of course, Calvin Ridley going to Tennessee. Your reaction to that? Listen, I, I, I don't love that they lost them because, frankly, I, I don't love the Gabe Davis signing. That being said, I never would have paid Calvin Ridley four years and $92 million. So I can't get on Jacksonville for not paying that price. I don't think there's another team in the league that would have paid that price. And Tennessee, I can tell you from coming out of Indianapolis, being down at the combine, a lot of talk around that organization was that they had to get playmakers. They had to get guys to help Will Levis so they could really get a sense of who they have at that position. And they were willing to pay it. They had more cap space than any team in the AFC, uh, and they used it. And for Jacksonville, look, it, it's, it stinks you have Ridley for a year and he's gone. At the same point, th that would have been insane to pay him that amount of money. I, I think he's a good player he's not worth $92 million. Yeah, it was a cash grab for Calvin. He's going to be 30 in December. This is probably one and only time at being a big-time free agent. He and his agent's credit, he cashed in. Back to yep. Gabe Davis. I know you were somewhat critical on social media, and you just reiterated it here. What about Gabe Davis to Jacksonville do you not like? I just – I think he's fine 
But to me, I'd rather they just go draft a receiver. Like, just go use a day two pick on a receiver in a class that's loaded. I mean, again, going back to Indianapolis, being at the combine, I, I talked to a lot of people in the NFL who feel like there's 10 receivers are going to be the top 50 picks. I mean, it is just a ridiculously strong class. And I, I think, look, you have Kirk, you have Zay Jones, you have Evan Ingram, you have Travis Etienne. You know, you and I have talked in the past. I, I just feel like you need to fix the defense. The defense is where – the attention needs to be paid. Now, granted, they made some additions on defense. I understand that. They're bringing Darnell Savage or anything else. But I just feel like that's the area where if you were going to spend, like spend there. I love the Mitch Moore signing. That was one of my favorite signings of the, of the entire free agency period. I love it. I think it's a great fit. I think he's a great player. But the Davis signing, Davis, his entire career has been a guy. He will have three or four games this year where he goes nuts and he has 130 plus yards, touchdown. And he'll also have 10 games where he won't have a catch and he'll completely disappear. I just don't like that for Jacksonville when, to me, there were other areas of the team they could have spent that money on. Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. Matt, one of the comparisons Christian Kirk in Arizona was buried behind DeAndre Hopkins. He comes to Jacksonville and flourishes. Could you argue Gabe Davis was buried behind Stephon Diggs in Buffalo? I wouldn't make that argument. Um, look, Davis had plenty of opportunity in Buffalo. And if you really look at it this past season, Diggs was awful the last three months of the year. I mean, awful. Like, you go look at his game logs, Stephon Diggs pretty much performed like a number three wide receiver. He uh, he did not do much. And so I don't think you can make the case that you know, Davis was, was kind of just buried behind him. I mean, in fact, at the end of the year, he was getting more snaps than Diggs was. And he really didn't do much. Um, look, I don't think, think they could have allocated that money better elsewhere. Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Matt, you said you love the Mitch Morse signing. What about Mitch yeah. Morse do you like? Everything. Look, he's a veteran. He's worked with the lead quarterbacks before. He's been in Doug Peterson's offense when they were both together in Kansas City, and Peterson was the OC. Uh, he's a smart player. Early in his career, he had some durability issues. He's been pretty durable in recent years. I, I just think, look, Jacksonville – the interior of that offensive line has been an issue. And while you could still say, hey, look, maybe there's an improvement to be made or, you know, here or there at guard. Like, I, I really think Jacksonville fixed its center issue. He is a really, really good football player. And he has been for a long time. Um, you know, he was a guy who got drafted in the second round. And a lot of people, when he got taken in the second round, were like, why? Why is he? I mean, he was not projected to be a second round pick. And he has turned out to be fantastic. I think, like I said, he is one of my favorite signings. Jacksonville kind of polarized me this this past week because they had some signings I really wasn't a fan of. They also had some signings that were some of my favorite. I love the DuVernay signing. I think that's a great signing. Um, you know, he's he's one of the better special teams players in the league. He can give you a little something on offense. So it's kind of just been funny with Balky. It, it feel, I feel like I've either really liked the move or I've been really critical. On defense, Rayshon Jenkins and Darius Williams out, Darnell Savage and Ronald Darby in. I mean, is that a push in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, about, about. I, I, the, the problem with – look, so the Savage move, I don't dislike it. My only critique of it would be the Packers went into this offseason saying our biggest problem last year was safety. We've got to address it. And the Jags – the Jags – Sign the guy who they one of them was part of the problem there. Now I, I think Savage, I think might benefit from a change of scenery. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he got stale in Green Bay. The Darby signing, he's been one of these guys that every year has changed teams. I mean, this is going to be his fifth team in six years. He's had durability issues. He's getting a little older. I I just don't love the Darby move. Now to be fair, he was a cheap signing. And if they go out and they draft the corner early, then I don't have a problem with the Darby signing. If the Darby signing represents, hey, he's going to play 80% of the snaps next year, 
I, I got a problem with that. He should not be that guy at this point. But if he's more of a rotational piece, a depth guy, they're going to use him to kind of help bring the uh, the younger guys along, then I have less of a problem with signing. You mentioned Duvernay from Baltimore as well. Do you feel he's a younger, maybe a little bit better version of Jamal Agnew? I, I think at bare minimum, he continues that trend of Jacksonville having strong special teams guys because Agnew was a really underrated piece nationally. Like, he, he could play. And Duvernay's, Duvernay's just a really good player. I, I've always liked his game. You know, look, he's not, he's not a guy on offense who's going to be a game breaker or anything like that. His role is special teams, but he's a really good special teams player like one of the best in football. I think it's a loss for Baltimore. I think it's a nice game for Jacksonville. Duvernay is the kind of guy, there might be a game or two this year that he swings because he has a massive return or a team's trying to punt it away from him. And instead of the punt going 50 yards, it goes out of bounds and it's shanked and it goes 25 and it, it changes field position in the game at a key time. Like I, I think he's, he's an underrated player. And I think a lot of times, we just kind of poo-poo these moves with special teams because it's like, ah, it's special teams. That stuff matters. It matters a lot. You look at the last two Super Bowls, okay, those games, I could make a strong argument. The biggest plays in the game were on special teams. Mm -hmm. The Chiefs won both those Super Bowls with massive plays in the second half on special teams. Uh, I think DuVernay could really help Jacksonville in that regard. Final moments, Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. Mac Jones comes home. He's going to be the backup to Trevor Lawrence. The Jaguars gave a sixth-round pick. I was actually surprised some of the backlash locally for giving a sixth-rounder for Mac Jones. What was your take on that? I think it's fine. I mean, look, I, I have the same take for every team with, a, with an elite quarterback. If that guy gets hurt, you're screwed anyway. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like – if, if you know, like everybody was killing the bills at Mitchell Trubisky, right? Like, oh, how could they spend money on it? my whole thing's like, yeah, I get, I, I, I don't love that signing because if Josh Allen gets hurt for any reasonable amount of time, they're screwed. I don't care who the backup quarterback is. So like, Mac Jones being there's fine. Like, would I rather, would I rather him over C.J. Beathard? Yeah, sure. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad move. I don't know how you can really criticize it. I don't think it's one of those things that you're gonna make. Man, thank God we got Mac Jones because if he's got to play, he got a problem anyway. So I. It's fine. I don't. I don't think it was a bad personnel decision. I don't think it's going to be something that's lauded, but I, I don't know that it's really worth criticizing. Matt, final question: The Jaguars' season ended in Nashville. Are they better now than they were then? Is it a push, or do you think they're worse? I think it's a push. I don't think they're worse. Um, I think they'll. I, I think they need to hit on on a few things in the draft. And my thing is, do offensively, look, just because I don't like the Gabe Davis signing doesn't mean I don't like the offense. I think the offense is going to be really good. I love the Moore signing. And I think offensively, even if you took Davis out of it, I think they've got more than enough talent. If, if Lawrence can kind of bounce back, although I don't think he was as bad as some people think he was. I think the numbers were a little bit tamped down, but I don't think he was necessarily bad. Um, they got to fix the defense. The defense is just, especially in the passing game, they got to – They've got to be able to find something defensively to hang their hat on beyond just Josh Allen. And if they can do that, look, I think they can compete with Houston in the division. I think they can be a thorn in the side in the playoffs. But as of right now, I think it's a push with a very, very important draft coming up. Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. Matt, I know you're slammed this week. Thank you for giving us a couple of minutes, brother. We certainly appreciate it. You got it, Ryan, anytime. There you go, Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated here with us on Hacker After Dark. And I'll give Matt credit. I mean, he doesn't sugarcoat it. He just said he does not like the Gabe Davis signing. I respectfully disagree with him. I really like the Gabe Davis signing. I think Gabe Davis is a guy, look, he's not even 25 yet, right? He turns 25 next month, uh, so he'll obviously be 25 for the season. He's already got 27 career touchdown passes. I think people look too much at the yearly catches, right? People are focusing – that he only had a max of 48 catches in his time at Buffalo in one year. Well, you could say the same thing about Christian Kirk, right? Christian Kirk was never a 1,000-yard receiver until he became a 1,000-yard receiver. And now that conversation is completely gone. So if Gabe Davis can stay healthy, I think he is going to be a valuable addition. Is he Calvin Ridley? Probably not. That's why I still think wide receiver is very much in play for the Jaguars. But go back to that 2022 run, the run to the divisional playoff. You didn't have Calvin Ridley, right? You had Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, and Christian Kirk. And your guys stayed healthy. 
this year if you have Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, and a healthy Zay Jones, and you add somebody in the draft, well, who knows? Uh, it doesn't have the appeal that Calvin Ridley had coming into last season. But, again, I think Zay Jones is a big factor here because he was hurt basically the entirety of last season. I mean, Zay Jones was healthy for what? Legitimately healthy for two, maybe three games all year? We saw what a healthy Zay Jones looked like in 2022 alongside Christian Kirk and Marvin Jones. Can that same production come back in 24 alongside Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, and whoever they ultimately add in the NFL draft? More on the National Football League, more on the Jacksonville Jaguars coming up in just a bit. NCAA tournament. We'll kind of run down the scores from earlier. Here are the games going on right now. Texas is about to eliminate Colorado State. Texas up 11 uh, with less than 20 seconds to go. That game is over. So Texas will advance to round two. Oakland, the 14 seed in the south, 12 minutes to go. They have a four-point lead on Big Blue on the Kentucky Wildcats, 53-49 Oakland. That's one to certainly watch now with 12 minutes remaining. Iowa State, a nine-point lead on South Dakota State early in the second half. And Gonzaga up 23 on McNeese at halftime, 48 25. Again, you still have four games that haven't even tipped off tonight. St. Peter's and Tennessee, NC State, Texas Tech, Samford, Kansas, and Drake, Washington State. All still to come. Florida plays tomorrow at 4.30 against Colorado in the South Region in Indianapolis. That, of course, is the 7-10 matchup. We'll come back. We'll get into college football a little bit with Mike Huguenin. That comes up in less than 20 minutes. Also, Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks will join us to give his opinion on Florida and what they need to do moving forward now without injured center Micah Handlocked. And we're live at Mr. Chubby's. Fleming Island is our location. Mr. Chubby's is absolutely terrific. We were out here last year for March Madness. We're glad to be back. The food smells great. The beer is cold. Burgers, chicken, you name it. TVs everywhere. Every TV tuned into an NCAA tournament game. It is a festive atmosphere out here in Fleming Island. A great place to come tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday, for all your NCAA tournament action. Coming up next, a little NFL, a little college talk. Again, Mike Huguenin, less than 20 minutes away, talking spring football here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. It's Hacker After Dark. He's 1010XL's best offensive lineman. Whoa. Sorry, 71. For real? Leon Searcy. He's just getting his game back. Noon to 1.30 weekdays. Tell me they got that in slow motion. On 1010XL. Baloo here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high-quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship-trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit smunezvision.com today. Here you can see. Ready to spice up your Wednesday? Head to Players Grill for Wing Wednesday. Enjoy mouth-watering wings for just 75 cents each. Plus, make it a happy hour all day long. Cheers to unbeatable deals and good times. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. It's March basketball. That means a host of top teams will be competing for the NCAA title. When it comes to commercial painters, there's also some healthy competition out there. Jason Parker with Performance Painting. To help you know the right questions to ask any painter competing for your business this year, visit performancepaintingjacks.com. Or if you're ready for a friendly quote, give us a call and ask about our free pressure wash promotion for your next project. Performance Painting, quality coatings applied with pride. Performance Painting! It's Kubota Orange Days, your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And get the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenny. Coastal Equipment. 
I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees. About $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to ETAJAX.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. When is the best time to buy a Yamaha Wave Runner? Right now. Make a splash this summer on a new Wave Runner from Ride Now Power Sports. No matter how you like to ride, Ride Now Power Sports has the model to fit your style. And for a limited time, receive a five year extended warranty on select new Yamaha Wave Runner purchases. Maximum fun, now with maximum protection. Only at Ride Now Power Sports in Jacksonville, 6407 Landing Boulevard, or online at RideNowJacksonville.com. Hey, Hicken here. You know I'm a hometown guy. There's nothing like home in Jacksonville, Florida. What a great place to live. Spring is here and everything is green and blooming. But that means I'll have to cut the lawn soon. It also means that we'll need to do some deep cleaning inside the house. That's where Zero Res comes in. Zero Res can clean your towel graph, the carpets, the area rug, furniture, and more. Right now, they're offering 25% off towel grout cleaning. Zero Res, man, spelling forwards or backwards. The right way to clean. Zero Res. Craig Franzi here for Stanley Pools. There's a reason so many of my friends and our listeners have had Stanley Pools build their pools and now maintain their pools because Stanley Pools truly cares about their customers. Stanley Pools is locally owned and has been serving our community for 35 years. For all of your pool needs, call Stanley Pools at 269-7277. That's Stanley Pools, a family tradition of fine swimming pools. 269-7277 or find them online at stanleypoolsfl.com. Home of the Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Navy Mutual would like to salute all Medal of Honor recipients that have been given our nation's highest award. In 1990, Congress designated March 25th as National Medal of Honor Day, and it was signed into law by President George H.W. Bush. Committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high-quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. Because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Pross, I'm thinking about changing my name. Again? You're already the media mogul, the straw that stirs the drink, the Duke of Pablo Bay. Now what? Refer to me as DreamFinders Danny Hicken. What in the blazes? Is this a cash grab? No, it's just that I believe so much in DreamFinders Homes. 20 locations in Northeast Florida, official home builder of Jags and Gators. Great opportunity for first-time homeowners. All right. DreamFinders Danny it is. Did I mention the lowest interest rates you can find? Visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Now let DreamFinders Danny celebrate through the majesty of song. Dream finders, oh, I believe they will build your stop. home just right. For the greenest, lushest lawn on the block, choose the local legends, Roundtree Sod. Don't just settle for ordinary. Let Roundtree Sod deliver you a picture-perfect lawn. To get a free estimate, call 7414-SOD. 7414-SOD. Tone 10XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. One hour down, one hour to go. Hacker After Dark on a Thursday. Live from Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island. 1010XL, 92. Point five FM, Mike Hugan in less than 15 minutes away as Florida, Florida State, Miami, and Georgia all in the midst of spring football practice. We'll also have Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks to preview Florida and their tournament run that begins tomorrow. He comes up later on in the 9 o'clock hour. Back into the National Football League. You know, we spent so much time on the Jaguars, on the guys that came in, obviously Calvin Ridley departing, that when you look around the landscape of the NFL, was absolutely crazy some of the things that transpired over the last 10 days. The quarterback class of 2021, those first rounders in 2021, what a disaster they all are, except for Trevor Lawrence, right? Mac Jones, although I don't think it was all his fault in New England, he's now gone. He's now here in Jacksonville as the backup. Justin Fields traded out of Chicago. He's now in Pittsburgh. Trey Lance, long gone in San Francisco. He's now in Dallas. I continue to say San Francisco is getting away with one of the worst trades ever made. 
one of the worst trades ever made in the National Football League, but nobody gives them grief on it because they absolutely got lucky when they found Brock Purdy when they did it, where they found him in the draft. And then Zach Wilson is going to go down as one of the biggest busts of recent memory, the number two pick overall in 2021. So Trevor with the torch. But you look at the quarterbacks, Justin Fields, as we mentioned, from Chicago to Pittsburgh. Mac Jones, as we mentioned, from New England to Jacksonville. Obviously, Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. You have Sam Darnold to Minnesota. Odds are Minnesota, who now has two first-round picks, will try to trade up to take a quarterback high in the draft. Russell Wilson is in Pittsburgh to go with Justin Fields. Gardner Minshew is now going to compete with Aiden O'Connell in Las Vegas for the Raiders' starting quarterback job. Just unbelievable moves at the QB position. That is certainly one of the things that transpired in the last 10 days. All the movement in the AFC South. We mentioned Tennessee and Jacksonville. Houston with Joe Mixon now, with Daniil Hunter now. The Texans are not resting on their laurels like Jacksonville did following 2022. Jacksonville chose to run it back, and it blew up in their face. Houston went out and got better with the additions of Daniil Hunter and Joe Mixon. Indianapolis didn't really add that much, but they kept their own guys, right? Michael Pittman, Grover Stewart, just to name a few. So free agency has been very, very interesting. It's all but calmed down now. You'll still see guys scattered that'll sign contracts, but by and large, everybody's focus is turning to the NFL draft, and everybody's focus, Denmark, is turning to some of these rule changes that are being presented And I saw one yesterday that I, quite frankly, could not believe. Now, they've talked about it a lot because of injuries that have transpired, particularly the injury to Mark Andrews, the Ravens tight end last year. But the so-called hip drop tackle, where I don't even know how to describe it, but you're tackling a guy, uh, his feet get caught underneath you because you're dropping, and his leg gets bent backwards. I mean, it's... Not a good basically, thing. Basically, uh, it's basically you uh, you're wrapping up somebody from behind, and then you just you wrap up their hips and you just drop them pretty much. Like right. you just and drop this, to the ground, and usually this, that r- leads to an ankle rolling or something like that. And the last time I checked, this was tackle football, right? It's not two hand tag or anything like that. Denmark, you're a high school coach, right? You work with high school kids. Do you guys teach? not to do the so-called hip drop tackle in light of what's going on in the NFL? No, not at all. I mean, we are pretty much like everybody else. Everybody in college and pro pretty much. I mean, you tackle a little bit in in training camp, but after that, like, you're just thudding at that point. You're not going to the ground. Yeah, there's no such thing as hip drop in high school football. Like, the, the idea behind it is a good one, right, to prevent injuries. How are they going to call that? If that gets passed, it hasn't gotten passed yet, but if it does, and you're talking about 15-yard penalties for the hip drop tackle, I mean, Denmark, there is you could call that 15 times a game, could you not? Yeah, and it's extremely annoying when, you know, you can't hit guys in the head for concussions, obviously, then you can't hit guys below the knee. Now you're trying to eliminate this. It's like you're making it almost impossible. You can't take a violent game and make it less violent whenever two people that can run 20-plus miles an hour into each other and make it safer. Like, it's just not possible. Look, when T.O. broke his leg because of the horse collar tackle, I agreed with that because that's not a natural thing. Grabbing somebody by the inside of their shoulder pads and dragging them down, that to me was a foul. T.O. broke his leg because of it, and because of T.O.'s injury, the horse collar tackle got introduced, and I was fine with that because, again, That, to me, is something that you're not supposed to do, even though it is tackle. That was egregious. The hip drop tackle is not egregious. It's part of the game. Does it suck that people get hurt? Yeah, it does, but I have absolutely no idea how you're going to enforce that, how you're going to rule on that if this ultimately is passed, which is why, Denmark, I can't imagine this being passed ultimately by the Rules Committee. Uh, I think it will eventually. If it's not this year, it'll be next year just because there'll be an injury to a big player and they're going to they're just going to do it because of because of money and it's better for them because the offensive stars keep playing so it'll happen well, eventually just cuz to make the game safer good luck on getting that one right that is going to be a quite the scene if that gets passed to see how many of those are called in the National Football League there are other rule changes that uh people have thrown out there i actually think some of the proposed rule changes in college 
are very interesting, and a lot of it's NFL. They want to bring the two-minute warning to college football. They want to bring NFL-type rules to college. Truthfully, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, now, I do hope the one-foot rule remains. There hasn't been any talk about changing that. I like how you can have one foot in in college as opposed to two feet in in the NFL. But Denmark, if college really is the minor leagues for the NFL, which essentially what it is right now with NIL, guys are getting ready to go to the league, it would make sense that a lot of the NFL rules would make their way to college ball. Yeah, and it, it'll be another way for, I'm sure, all the conferences, specifically the SEC and the Big Ten, to market more and, and for the, the television contracts with ESPN and Fox to make more money and get more money into their conference for each team. Speaking of college ball, there is a lot of spring football going on all over the country in Gainesville, in Coral Gables, in Tallahassee, in Athens, just to name a few. My buddy Mike Hugan has covered the world of college football for years. The guy is an absolute encyclopedia when it comes to the sport of college football. Let's talk Billy Napier. Let's talk Mike Norvell. Let's talk Mario Cristobal and all points in between. A little college spring ball on a March Madness Thursday. Live from Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island. Hacker after dark on a Thursday. Mike Huguenin joins us next here on 1010XL and on 92. Point five FM. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on ten ten XL and ninety two point five FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Spring football going on all over the country, and that includes right here in our area with Florida, Florida State, Miami, and Georgia all getting after it. Spring ball going on in those four locations. Let's talk about all of it with a guy that has forgotten. More about college football than I'll probably know. He is an encyclopedia when it comes to the sport. That's my buddy Mike Huguenin. He's covered it for years, and he's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Mike, how you doing? I am doing uh, quite well. Uh, it's interesting to be talking football during the, the height of March Madness. But, yeah, this is, uh, frankly, a very important spring for Florida, Florida State, and Miami for varying reasons. You know, and when you go to the Gators, Mike, let's begin there. Year three for Billy Napier. We know what that schedule is coming down the uh, stretch here when you get into August. Obviously, it's brutal, and we'll have we'll have you on plenty of times before then. But but in totality, a lot of new players, a lot of new coaches on the staff. What have you made of this offseason so far for the Gators? Yeah, I think that's why th- this is such an important spring for, for Napier. There, there is a... Uh, a bunch of new guys on staff. They have to get acclimated to each other uh, and to the players and to, you know, they, they all came in from different places, so there's an acclimation period. Um, I think that if you look at Florida offensively, there's some potential there. Uh, defensively, I think the biggest issue last year was they were extremely young and the depth was unproven. I think that will be a little bit different this year. Uh, but I think offensively, obviously, Mertz comes back. Mertz had a really good season last year. He was third nationally in completion percentage. Um, Florida's offense doesn't really incorporate much of the deep ball. I think that needs to be tweaked. Um, they, they need to find a go-to receiver this spring. Um, you know, is that going to be Eugene Wilson? Or is it going to be um, Shimmery Dyke, the, the DK rather, the, the transfer from Wisconsin, who has worked with Mertz before. The offensive line has a new coach in there. Um, that's that's a gigantic issue as well. Um, but, the, you know, D.J. Lagway's there. He has, by all accounts, performed well in spring. He has an incredible number of physical tools. Um, there is a learning curve. Um, even if you are a five-star quarterback, there's a learning curve to college football. Um, but the, the, and defensively, there's just uh, again a whole bunch to work on. You've got to shore up the secondary, um, shore up the defensive line, and, and find a pass rusher. Now, uh, I think they did a solid job in the portal. Not great, solid. I think DK is going to be a important addition. I don't think he's going to be as good as Ricky Pearsall was, but I think DK adds. Um, a veteran presence to Florida's wide receiver room, something that's needed. Uh, and defensively, um, Pop Howard, the Jacksonville kid coming in to play linebacker, you know, where does he fit in? But this, yeah, this is an important spring, again, for a lot of reasons. Um, 
for Billy Napier. Mike, is there a hotter seat in the SEC, or for that matter, the country, I guess, than than Billy Napier in Gainesville? I, I don't think so. I think when you look at what Florida fans expect, um, you look at the success that the basketball team has had this year with a second-year coach, Florida did not have success in Napier's second year last year on the, on the football field. So uh, I think there is a ton of pressure on Napier. The schedule makes things more difficult. And, heck, you know, three of the four non-conference games, they're playing Miami in the opener, they're playing UCF, and they're playing FSU in the regular season finale. So three in-state opponents, and, you know, I don't care who you're a fan of, if your favorite team loses to an in-state opponent – um, that does not bode well, I don't think, for Napier's um, long-term success of Florida or even short-term success. You, you don't want to lose uh, all three of those games. I don't know if you want to lose any of them, frankly. Mike Hugan in covering the world of college football with us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Mike, I go as far back in the memory banks as 1990. I'm 40 years old. I vaguely remember the AstroTurf with Donald Douglas, but honestly – my first real memories were Shane Matthews and Huey Richardson and the 90 Gators and on forward. And going back as far as 90 in my memory, I can never remember a schedule that looked like this on paper. Now, again, will it materialize into how hard it actually looks? We'll see. But here we are in March looking at this thing, Mike. Can you remember a harder schedule in the history of Florida football? No, that's the thing, though. It is March, and there's some a lot of a lot of schedules look much tougher two or three weeks into the season, and a lot of schedules look a lot easier two or three weeks into the season. We I mentioned earlier, Florida opens with Miami. You know, Miami right now. I don't know who's starting at running back for Miami. Um, Mark Fletcher has a foot injury. Will he be healthy for the opener? And today, Henry Parrish, the number two rusher last year, decided to enter the transfer portal. So, and they already lost Don Chaney to the transfer portal. So, and they're breaking in a new quarterback and they're trying to find some other receivers. So, but it, it does look like an extremely difficult schedule for Napier. Um, but again, I think the, the, the opening game against Miami is going to tell a lot about both programs. And I'll be, yeah, it, there's a lot of pressure on Crystal Ball, a lot of pressure on Napier. I think there's more on Napier uh, in that opening game. It, it is at home. Um, and I would not want to be he or anybody on his staff if Florida loses the opening game. Mike, Florida State begins spring brawl this week, and look, they're replacing, I think, 18 contributors from last year's team. There's a lot of guys that need to be replaced. Jared Verse, Trey Benson, Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Jordan Travis, and that's just to name a few. Uh, But obviously Norvell has done well in recruiting. We know what he's done in the portal. Has Florida State done enough this offseason to replace the great talent that they lost? I don't think so. I think this is certainly not a team that's going to go 6-6. Six and six. I would think this is the floor is a 10-win team. But um, Uwe Ungalale is a distinct step down from Jordan Travis. Um, he's not nearly as dynamic. He, you know, he, is a, he can run the ball, um, but, but he's not busting 20-yard runs where he shows off his shiftiness. I think he's more a guy you know, who's going to run 8 or 10 yards and maybe run over a DB. Um, the wide receiver core is a question. I know they brought in um, a bunch of transfers there. I, I don't think there's going to be anybody as close to as, ex- again, I mentioned the word explosive, as explosive as Keon Coleman. And they brought in Roy Dale Williams from Alabama at running back. He's not as explosive as Trey Benson. So I think the big play aspect at Florida State, they're going to have to develop that. I think last year they were a big play machine. This year, I think it's going to be, you know, instead of having a 55-yard Trey Benson run, maybe it's a 25- or 30-yard run by Toa Feely or Roy Dale Williams. I think the offensive line, that is uh, Norvell and Alex Atkins have done a great job. Five years ago, that was an abysmal, abysmal, you can use any word, that was a horrendous unit. Now it's a solid unit. I think they go eight or nine deep. The question is, yeah, they, they got guys who can play – multiple positions. I think now, you know, heck, the concern five years ago was do we have five guys who can start? And this year it's, okay, who's starting? we got some good depth here. So, you know, there's questions at wide receiver, quarterback, running back, and even tight end. But 
at least the offensive line looks solid. Defensively, um, you're right, Jared Verse gone. Uh, Braden Fisk gone. Um, the, the defensive line is, a, I think, at a, a least a slight question. How good is Daryl Jackson going to be? Um, the guy, the transfer from Miami who had to sit out last year. Interesting to me is you, you look at their projected starting defensive tackles. Both are from Gadsden County High School. You got Daryl Jackson and Joshua Farmer. And, you know, you mentioned that your football fan and goes back to about 90. Well, mine goes back into the 70s. And back in the 70s, you know, Florida and Florida State and even Miami, they had a bunch of guys from small towns in Florida playing all over the roster. And that's not necessarily the case anymore, though I do think it's interesting that Florida State's projected starting defensive tackles are both from a relatively small school, Gadsden County High. Um, the secondary, they need Fentrell Cypress to step up and play better than he did last year. Shaheem Brown's a solid safety. Who's going to be his running mate? Um, but again, unlike four or five years ago where, okay, we need a new starter. Do we have guys who are that good? This year it's, okay, we, get, we need a new starter. Who, we, who are we going to choose from? At least we have talented players. And that, that Norvell deserves a ton of credit. His work in the portal has been excellent. His recruiting class the past two years have been a lot better than they were uh, his first two years and what Taggart brought in and, frankly, the last one or two of the Jimbo Fisher era. So FSU now has talent to work with, and it's up to Norvell and his staff to pick the right guys to play. A couple of more from Mike Huguenin talking the world of college football with us here on 1010XL. Mike, quickly, the ACC at large, Clemson, Florida State, is it same old, same old, or will anybody challenge them? Well, I think if you talk to people in Miami, they're very high on their roster, though, again, I, you wonder about their running back core. Um, and, you know, Miami last year was almost 50-50 run pass. Um, they bring in Cam Ward, who threw the ball about 60% of the time at Washington State. They didn't bring him in to be a – they didn't bring him in to hand off the ball 50% of the play. So it's going to be interesting to see how Miami tweaks its offense. I think, you know, the receiving core isn't elite. But I think right now you can look at Miami and say, well, their receivers are better than their running backs. Um, defensively, Miami needs two new safeties. But I think Miami, Clemson, and Florida State are, yeah, they're, they're going to finish one, two, three in some order. North Carolina is going to take a step back. Um, I don't know what to think about Louisville. They were a massive surprise last year. I think Brom is a good coach. But, you know, they need some portal guys to pay off, including Don Chaney, the Miami transfer and running backs. But I think it is a three-team race in the ACC, and I'm giving Miami the benefit of the doubt because I assume at some point the fact that they are a talented roster will mean something in a league that does not have a lot of talented rosters. Back to the SEC as we close out the college football conversation with Georgia and look, Carson Beck, Mandarin High School product, obviously a lot of people around these parts are rooting for that young man. Georgia looks very good. What's interesting is Texas is going to get a ton of national love, the newcomer to the SEC. We'll see about Alabama, life after Nick Saban. Uh, LSU looks pretty good, obviously. What's your thought at the top of the conference, Mike? Is it yeah, Georgia-Texas or Texas-Georgia? I think it's Georgia. Um, I'm not sure who this I, – I would. I think Texas has an, uh, a solid roster, but they lost two stud defensive tackles, um, and the SEC is a line of scrimmage league even more so than the Big – much more so, frankly, than the Big 12. So that, that loss is, is going to be interesting to see how they overcome it. Offensively, there is firepower there. Um, you know, Ewers is back. You expect him to be better than he was last year. You know, you expect a guy to get better every year. But if, if that's the case, then if you're Georgia, Carson Beck had a phenomenal first season as a starter. What's he going to do this year? So, you know, they're, they're solid at running back. They have a deep offensive line. They got receivers who are solid. Defensively, they're, they're not ever going to have a true fall off. So I think unquestionably going into the season, you got to look at Georgia as the SEC favorite. Um, the second best team, you know, Alabama – is sort of a mystery. Um, I'm a huge Kalen DeBoer fan, but he did not bring his offensive – well, he brought his offensive coordinator with him, but the, uh, Ryan Grubb ended up leaving. You 
wonder about their offensive line. They lost some key guys up front, and that wasn't that good a unit last year. Talent-wise, it's still a very good roster, but you know, you're also going from Nick Saban, the greatest of all time, to Kalen DeBoer, and that's going to be a, a switch for the players. So um, it, it's going to be a more interesting season than usual, I think, in the SEC this fall. And I think LSU breaking in a new quarterback, um, what's Texas A&M going to do with a new coach? Can Missouri really be that good again? Um, what's Tennessee? How's Tennessee going to be with Nico at quarterback? So it, there's a lot of phenomenal storylines in the SEC this year. We didn't, we didn't even mention Lane Kiffin and, and Ole Miss. The, he had the best portal uh, season of all. Um, they are spending a lot of NIL money in Oxford, Mississippi. And I think every team you just named, Florida plays, by the way. Yeah, that's Yes, Ole Miss, yes. LSU, Texas, Georgia, Florida plays yep, them all. That's true. Hey, Mike, final question. Uh, not not to really go X's and O's in the NCAA tournament, but what does it say about the conference? Eight teams get into the big dance. Some think they can make some noise, including Tennessee, including Kentucky. Obviously, a very good year college basketball wise in the SEC. Yeah, I think that that all goes back to Mike Slive when he was still the, the commissioner. He looked around and and saw, okay, we're phenomenal in football, we're phenomenal in baseball, we're phenomenal in softball, what the heck are we doing in men's basketball? And I think he sort of goosed uh, SEC ADs um, and said, you know, if you're not Kentucky and you're not Vanderbilt, you need to pay more attention to basketball. And, you know, Florida obviously wasn't in there either, because Florida has been good for, you know, they, they had that great phenomenal run under Donovan. But Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina's better now. Tennessee's a lot better now. Um, it's it, it really is a good season. And when you consider that two teams that were supposed to be in the top half of the league, Arkansas and Mizzou, were garbage this year. So, even with those two teams being horrendous, the SEC did have a phenomenal season. It helped Mississippi State that they won a game in the conference tournament. Same with A&M. Um, Auburn, by all metrics, should make a long, long run in the NCAA tournament. I wonder it's, – it's, it's, yeah, you're right, though. It's, it's been a phenomenal season for men's basketball in the SEC, and I think that goes back to Mike Sly basically telling his ADs, spend money on men's basketball, and it will pay off, and, and it has. Mike Huguenin does a great job covering the world of college athletics, primarily college football. He's done it for years. Mike, really enjoyed the conversation. We'll do it again in a couple of months, brother. Thank you as always. Excellent. Thanks, man. There you go. Mike Huguenin with us here on Hacker After Dark. Uh, Cinderella may be showing up to the ball here tonight in the NCAA tournament. 28 seconds to go in the South region. The 14 seed Oakland was up one. Shot clock winding down. They just drilled a three. They are now up four on Kentucky. 28 seconds to go. Again, the 14 seed is 28 seconds away from knocking off Big Blue and John Calipari and Kentucky. Um, It's going to come down to free throws. Uh, Kentucky ball, but they're down four with 28 seconds to go. And if Kentucky loses, my gracious, what an awful day for the SEC. They've already lost Mississippi State. They've already lost South Carolina. They're on the verge of losing Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee plays tonight, but man alive. A great regular season for the Southeastern Conference has turned into an awful first round of the NCAA tournament. We'll come back. We'll let you know if Oakland holds on to knock off the Kentucky Wildcats. We're live. Mr. Chubby's Wings in Fleming Island. Love this location for March Madness. Love it for any sporting event. Great food, TVs everywhere, good fellowship. This is the place to be, Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island. Coming up next, more on the NCAA tournament. It's Hacker After Dark on a Thursday night here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Your home for Florida Gators baseball is 1010XL. It's a weekend of baseball in Baton Rouge, Florida LSU. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon on 1010 AM. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, 
or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Doc Doc Rooter is a full-service plumbing company that's locally owned and operated, fully licensed and insured. We'll be at your home in a timely manner, provide honest pricing, and ensure the job is completed correctly or we'll make it right. Doc Doc Rooter can handle all plumbing jobs, including repairing broken pipes, clearing clogged drains, to installing new fixtures, water heaters, garbage disposals, and full repipes for older homes. If you're stuck, call the Doc, 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. This NFL free agency profile is brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Experience the universal difference. Jacksonville finally found a receiver to stretch the field. Buffalo's Gabe Davis gives Trevor Lawrence a trusty target in the red zone. The Central Florida star was limited by a bad knee last season, but had career highs in catches and yards in 2020. He's known as Big Game Gabe for contested catches and 50-50 balls, which would be valuable deposits at the bank in Duval. This date in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On March 21st, 2019, Japanese baseball right fielder Ichiro Suzuki finishes his career with a record 4,367 base hits as Mariners beat the A's. Hi, I'm Sean Monahan from Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach. Since 1977, we've been Jacksonville's local family jeweler with a beautiful selection of fine jewelry and certified diamonds. But we're also Jacksonville's leading buyer of gold and silver and diamonds from the public. Gold has recently hit an all-time high at over $2,100 per ounce and hasn't been at this level in 13 years. Pay bills, buy something fun. Now is the time to sell your gold for cash and get top dollar at Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach or book online at monahanjewelry.com. Ever wonder how you can transform your living spaces into captivating works of art? At First Coast Lighting and Fans, they offer a huge selection of high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness. Visit their showroom on Phillips Highway at the Avenues and step into a world of quality without compromise. Discover the difference that locally owned expertise makes and let them help you experience the transformation from average to extraordinary. At First Coast Lighting and Fans. Hello First Coast, I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL Green for Life. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion for QC Kinetics. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you love to do this spring. Call QC Kinetics now. Set up a free consultation. Call them at 904-274-5522. They've got two great locations, Mandarin and Ponte Vedra Beach. Go see them. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief with no surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. It's a fact, QC Kinetics is literally transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. 
pro athletes have been doing this for decades, but now this life-changing treatment is available for you. So you can walk and run and climb stairs and play golf and move again pain-free. 904-274-5522. That's QC Kinetics. Call them today. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. All right, so here's the situation. Oakland is up three on Kentucky in the south region, the 14 versus the three. They're up three with four seconds left. They're going to the free throw line. If they hit one free throw, this game's over. Uh, if it's not over already, I think Kentucky is out of timeouts. The uh, Wildcats down three, four seconds to go. Oakland at the free throw line can ice the game here. And what an upset this would be in the south region with the 14 knocking off the three. This does have Florida Gator ramifications. All right, he missed the first free throw. So we're going to uh, postpone the Cinderella talk, at least for now. He's uh, getting ready for free throw two. A timeout is being called. you got to love the drama here of the NCAA tournament. The reason this has Gator ramifications potentially is this is in the south region. If Florida were to get to the second weekend, again, that's a tall order. That would mean beating Colorado tomorrow and potentially having to beat Marquette on Sunday. But what the heck, let's think far ahead. Kentucky would have potentially been the Sweet 16 opponent for the Gators because they're in the south region as the three seed. Obviously, if Kentucky loses, that would no longer be the case. So, Uh, From a Gator perspective, if you're a Gator fan, not only do you probably love seeing Kentucky lose, but it also has ramifications on your bracket. If you were to get to the second weekend, you would not have to see Kentucky in the Sweet 16. We'll let you know as soon as the second free throw is up, if Oakland has iced the game or if Kentucky has a chance to pull a miracle, and that's what it would be at this point with four seconds to go, down three, 94 feet away from the goal. Um, we'll keep it right here. Again, Oakland at the line. This free throw would ice the game. Kentucky with a miss could have a chance. Game's over. Oakland makes the free throw. It's a four-point game with four seconds to go, and this game is over. So the Southeastern Conference absolutely took it on the chops today with Mississippi State losing to Michigan State, South Carolina losing to Oregon, and now Kentucky getting upset by Oakland as a 14 has knocked off a three, and that eruption that you hear are brackets everywhere, Denmark, just going up in smoke. Uh, McNeese State was my, like, Cinderella that I had going to the Sweet 16. They're getting absolutely demolished by Gonzaga, and if that isn't bad enough for my bracket, I had Kentucky, I believe. Did I have them in the eight? I had a minimum Sweet 16. I might have had them in the Elite Eight. So my bracket was awesome to begin the night. It has absolutely been devastated, Denmark, in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, yours, but everybody else. It's not like other people saw Oakland and all these other upsets, you know. So, I mean, it's not like you're the only one in the boat. You know, it's look, we talked to a lot of people that did not see a lot of big upsets, right? And so far, we have seen some upsets. We've seen a couple of 11s knock off a couple of 6s. We're about to see a 14 knock off a 3 as the game is over, Oakland has done it, 80-76. to 76. The Kentucky Wildcats are officially eliminated, and now Oakland will get the winner of NC State and Texas Tech for the right to go to the Sweet 16. Don't you absolutely love March Madness? The Gators will get their NCAA tournament underway tomorrow, 430 is the projected tip time, 4.30 Eastern, up in Indianapolis as they play Colorado, a Colorado team that had to beat Boise State last night just to get to this game. Florida starts life without Micah Hanlockton, the center who's out with a broken leg, and we shall see. But that region, the south region, just got a little bit easier as the number three seed, the Kentucky Wildcats, are officially knocked out. Gators are on 1010XL. That's right, Richie. Gators on 1010XL tomorrow. You'll get the Frangie Show on 92.5 FM and the Florida broadcast against Colorado 
will be on 10-10 a.m. Speaking of the Gators, let's preview Florida's run in the NCAA tournament. Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks, he joins me next. Hacker After Dark from Mr. Chubby's in Fleming Island. Great place to watch games. I love it. You will too. Mr. Chubby's Wings in Fleming Island. Come on out this weekend for NCAA Hoops. Mark Wise next on Hacker After Dark. If you're wondering if it's possible to find sports talk radio made for Jacksonville other than 1010XL, good luck. 1010XL. (laughs) That is beautiful. Jacksonville Sports Radio. Right now, say big at Key Buick GMC, like up to 15,000 off all new GMC trucks or choose 9,000 in savings with 2.9 APR financing for up to 72 months. Need some low APR rates? Key Buick GMC has them. Rates as low as 1.9% for 36 months, 3.9% for 48 months, 4.9% for up to 60 months, and 5.9% APR for up to 72 months. Across the street from Tinseltown, Key Buick GMC. Warm weather means the beach, fishing, golf, and more. Make sure to drop into Dales and grab a cold case to go. From Bud Light to their seltzer, from Mick Ultra to Modelo, or your favorite crafts like Bold City or Sweetwater. Grab and go at your local Dales. Meet Cheryl. Hey. She's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and... But she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Instant key. Instant key. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant key. Instant Keys saves the day if you have lost or broken keys. They can program new keys and remotes for nearly every make and model of vehicle at a fraction of the dealership cost. Fast, honest, and reliable locksmith service. Call 722-1111. Instant Keys. Instant Keys. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant Keys comes to you. Nothing came easy, and he wouldn't have it any other way. It's blue-collar line of scrimmage football. I'm Tom McManus, and I join Jaguars today, Fridays from 10 to noon. Brought to you by Renewal by Anderson Windows and Doors on 1010XL. This is Keith Catlin for Catlin Truck Accessories, and we are so blessed to be in business for over 100 years. Over 100 years of the best product and customer service means you can count on Catlin. From rolling lock bed covers to Lear toppers, Cam Locker Toolbox, Catlin Truck Accessories has you covered when it comes to your truck or van. We do those too. Got a fleet of vehicles? We can outfit them all. Who can you count on? Count on Catlin. One name, one location, 100 years. You can count on Catlin. Has someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away? I'm Susan Cohen, and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein & Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI, domestic violence, and all criminal offenses. In your battle with the justice system, there's only one thing you need to know. Dial David, 24-7 at Epstein & Robbins, 354-5645. 354-5645. Are your kids ready to play this summer? Come check out the why. Summer is a time for kids to explore new things and expand the limits of their imagination. At the Y Summer Camp, every day is a new adventure. Kids can learn about STEM, arts and humanities, athletic sports, outdoor games, and more. Registration is now open, but space is limited, and spots are filling up quickly. Learn more and find your adventure at fcymca.org. Search Summer Day Camp. Clearwater. John, I can't even mow my side yard. It's so soggy. Man, my builder sucks. Brent, calm down. This is a common problem in neighborhoods where houses are built too close together. You need gutters and a properly installed French drain that will soak up subsurface water. We can completely dry it up. So I can take my builder off my speed dial now, huh? Yeah, we got you, buddy. Let that builder bitterness go. Clear water irrigation and drainage too. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? 
Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero res. Spelled forward or backwards. It's it's the right right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C Zero res. Lauren Brooks here from Mayport CNC Fisheries. Growing up at the beach, I know good shrimp and oysters when I see them. They're local and they're fresh. That's why Mayport CNC Fisheries is my go-to for both. They have local shrimp in stock seven days a week. Eat like a local at Mayport CNC Fisheries. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the all-pro roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. The 68 field NCAA tournament bracket release. Who will cut down the nets in a couple of weeks? Well, can anybody stop UConn looking to be back-to-back national champions? And what about Florida now with the injury to Micah Hanlock? And all that will be discussed with our buddy Mark Wise. You see him all over the ESPN family of networks and he's always kind enough to join us here on 1010xl in jacksonville mark how you doing hacker man i'm doing great i've got uh game boards and brackets and travel itineraries i wouldn't have it any other way and i know that dayton gets started on tuesday night but is there any two better days out of the calendar then Thursday and Friday, where all you do is watch these games all over the country. Absolutely, no question about it. I actually lump Saturday and Sunday in as well. To me, it's four of the best days in sports the entire year. And let's begin with Florida. Great run in the SEC tournament. Uh, They played four games in like 60 hours or something ridiculous. I'm not sure, you know, about that scheduling, although that's the way it's always been. And Micah Hanlockton goes down yesterday, Mark. Just a tough blow for a good kid and really will affect Florida. But let's first talk about the player you hate to see any time a situation like that arises. Oh, there's no question about it. I just felt awful uh, for everybody, for Micah, for the team, for the coaching staff. Um, and, And I know his numbers don't jump out at people, but offensively on the glass, Uh, He is among the nation's leaders in offensive rebounds per minute play. That's a big deal uh, for a team that um, kind of has hung its hat this year on their guard play and the ability of those bouncy bigs to go to the offensive glass. So it'll be interesting because they've had four bigs for two spots. They've played that way all year. And now they've got three bigs for two spots. And so one of the things uh, that that I was glad to see they did not draw a Thursday game for two reasons. One, because of the injury. And two, because you just played four games in four days that ended on Sunday. So that will give everybody an extra day. But it also gives the coaching staff an extra day to prepare for the what ifs. You can certainly survive three bigs for two spots. But what about foul trouble? And so I think it's going to give them an opportunity to evaluate how they want to play uh, if that were to happen in terms of maybe going small ball. Now, the problem with small ball, we saw this Florida team last year play that way, and they got crushed on the glass. I don't think that will be option A, B, or C, but it needs to be in the back pocket just in case. Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks you know you mentioned the four bigs obviously Tyree Samuel Thomas Howe and Alex Condon will have to pick up the slack and that brings me to Riley Kugel who's one of the most uh you know just a questionable situation as to what's going on there was a stud last year has had some good games this year and then some games he's not even playing I mean I guess the question mark is without hand locked and now Riley Kugel I believe is listed at what 
six 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 seven. I mean, yeah, I don't think he's quite that big. Okay, um, could, could could he so, could he be a in a pinch if you're going to play small ball? Could he be a four in a four guard lineup? Yeah, in a pinch. Uh, I, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, with Aberdeen and you know the way he played uh, in Nashville, will, will will that earn him more minutes as a six foot five possibility? Maybe. Um, there's no question. It, it, it's it's one of the ingredients that I think you must have in order to make a Final Four run. Is you must be healthy, and so Florida falls into that boat with Marquette and Kansas and you know Houston's front court. Um, so from that standpoint, you're going to have to overcome that. And here's the thing. I, I mean, Hanlog then averages about 22 minutes a game. Well, the three bigs cannot absorb seven more minutes each. Uh, th- then you're playing, you know, then, then Samuel's playing 36 minutes. And I don't think you want that. So um, they're going to have to figure out a way to get three or four minutes probably out of a small ball lineup. And some of that just may depend on matchups. Mark, let's imagine they win on Friday. They would likely face Marquette in yeah. round two. Can Florida play with Marquette? Well, it depends uh, on the health status of, of, of Tyler Collect. I mean, that that he's the engine that makes the – now, I say that. I also watch them play UConn very competitively uh, on the in the uh, Big East Finals. Uh, the other night uh, until the last five minutes. But, uh, I mean, again, I mean, Kalek is just different, man. He's a, he's a, he's in that top 10 in the country. I want to say in, in, in fouls drawn and he's top 10 in the country in assist rate. He's an elite, elite level point guard and makes them go. But um, yeah, I mean, at this point in time, uh, could Florida win two this this week? Absolutely. They've got the guard play to do it, and they've got the offense to do it. Mark Wise all over the ESPN family of networks. The man has forgotten more about college basketball than I'll ever know, and he's a valuable resource for us here on 1010XL. Mark, thank you as always. Let's maybe do it again next week when the 64 gets whittled down to 16, and we'll see where we're at at that point, my friend. Let's do it and enjoy the madness. And thank you to my buddy Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks for joining us here on Hacker After Dark as the Florida Gators will get underway tomorrow. They will take on Colorado in round number one of the NCAA tournament. That is a 430 tip. If Florida were to win tomorrow, odds are it will be Marquette on Sunday, so we will see what the Florida Gators can do. Again, Micah Hanlockton obviously out. How will they replace their big man in the middle? Alex Condon will get the start, the freshman, who has been very, very good for the Gators so far this year. Well, that'll just about do it. It has been a very, very busy Thursday night edition here on Hacker After Dark. We have a lot of people to thank. Of course, Mr. Chubby's out here in Fleming Island, man. What a great place to watch the NCAA tournament. This place was rocking all night. It'll be rocking tomorrow into the weekend as the tournament goes on. Mr. Chubby's out in Fleming Island. We always appreciate them having us out here on Hacker After Dark. Again, you heard from Mark Wise of the ESPN family of networks. Thank you to Justin Mello of the Draft Network to talk a little Jags and a little AFC South, both free agency and draft. Appreciate Justin taking time out for us tonight. My buddy Mike Huguenin, the man is a college football encyclopedia. Love talking college ball with Mike as Florida, Florida State, Miami, Georgia, all right now in the midst of spring football. And thank you to Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated. Always enjoy talking NFL with my buddy Matt Verderam. We'll be back tomorrow night on a Friday, and we will close out the week here on Hacker After Dark beginning at 8 o'clock. Dylan Denmark was your producer tonight. Dylan, great job as always. Richie was our on-site engineer. Richie, you are the man. I'm the hacker, Ryan Green. And again, Jacksonville, thank you for spending part of your Thursday evening with us right here on Hacker After Dark on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. So for all of us here on HAD, have an absolutely terrific 
remainder of your Thursday evening. And we will do it all over again tomorrow night on a Friday beginning at 8 o'clock. Until then, so long from